If you're suffering from arm pump and hand cramps, then you're in good company. Oh, a little steeper than I thought. I came down right on my front brake. For over a year, my riding was plagued with preventable pain. And after some exhaustive research and a metric ton of trial and error, I finally was able to rid myself of the pain. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, stop watching this and click the link in the comments to view it. As I structured these recommendations such that you can try the free and easy tricks first before spending your hard-earned dough on comfort bling. With any luck, you'll find a minor tweak that helps and you won't have to invest a dime in the kind of gear I'm about to discuss in this video. So just to recap, you've got your bike set up the way you like it, you're using proper technique, you stop shoveling garbage bags full of Halloween candy into your gob on a daily basis, and you're still suffering. Maybe there's something you can do in the gym to help. Everything I do is in preparation for bike club. The first rule of bike club is... What I eat, what I watch on TV, how I work out. It's all focused on this insipid addiction. So naturally, I've tailored my workout to focus on improving my riding. Now I'm not going to go into detail on my entire workout, maybe I'll do a video on that later if you guys are interested, but I will talk about some specific things I do which target alleviating the strain placed on my arms and hands. Big muscles do not equate to good riding. In fact, quite the opposite. If you train your muscles to inflate and pump up through heavy reps at the gym, guess what they're going to do when you work them out on the trail? If you work out, and you should, focus on exercises that build lean muscle, not big muscle. Think Red Viper, not the mountain. Minus the head explosion. Now I have a body like a weeble wobble, so early in 2018, I made legs my uh, gym priority. Not only that, but I focused on exercises that hit the stabilizer muscles. This made it easier to stay standing on the bike in tricky situations, as well as control it using my lower body rather than my arms. Exercises like bosa ball squats, deadlifts, and lunges are great for enduro riders. So, if you're not one of us who pay money each month to pick up heavy things and put them back down again, perhaps consider joining in our insanity. I used to use a grip strengthener on low resistance, whereby I could squeeze it a few hundred times in a row. I say used to, because this is not something you want to overdo. Again, big muscles bad, strong lean muscles good. However, if you have spaghetti arms, then a grip strengthener might be a worthwhile investment. This one was huge for me. If you have access to a sauna, use it. Use it every day if you can. In addition to limbering up your muscles, joints, and ligaments, and improving blood flow, saunas cause your body to produce heat shock proteins, which in turn decimate your body's inflammatory response. Simply put, sitting in a hot as ball sauna for 15 minutes a day will decrease the amount of pain you feel when you later exert yourself on the bike. This had a marked effect on my arthritis, which loved to flare up the minute I hit the trail. And finally, stretch. Now I'm about as flexible as an 80 year old cab driver, thanks to the fact I never ever stretch, or at least I never did. But I'm here to tell you, stretching goes a long way to improve blood flow and minimize cramping. So stretch those hands and forearms before you ride. If nothing else I've discussed has worked for you, then you might need to pony up some bucks and customize your bike to fit your body. This stuff can get expensive, so just try one at a time. I'll start with the cheapest alterations first that work for me. Basically, there's one rule to hand grips. The thicker the grips, the less vibration you'll feel in your hands, and the less hand cramping is likely to occur. However, the thicker the grips, the more likely you are to suffer from arm pump, as you'll wind up holding on tighter. So it was kind of six of one, half dozen of the other for me. 
Now I suffered more from cramps than pumps, so I opted for thick gel grips. But I'm guessing for most of you, you're going to want to go with thinner grips, as this will make it easier for you to hold on without gripping too tight. Now I'm a bigger guy. Years of bench press and skipping leg day resulted in a physique best suited for walking on my hands. What in the f is a leg day? If I stick my arms out in front of me and tweak my wrists in, as though I'm gripping handlebars with moderate sweep, I instantly feel arm pump coming on. Which leads me to one of the biggest alterations I made to reduce arm pump. Buying handlebars that fit my frame. I opted for the straightest Renthal fat bars I could find. Very little sweep at all. And when you know it, the very next ride, my arms thanked me. If you think this might be a problem for you, try this. Hold your arms out in front of you comfortably, as if you're riding. Look at the angle of your wrists and hands, then compare this to where your hands actually sit while riding your bike. If the bars don't match with where your hands fall naturally off the bike, then you might want to consider buying some bars with less sweep. I personally have never tried flex bars, but I've heard enough positive responses to them that I thought it wrong of me to omit them from this list. But again, these are expensive additions, so unless you've exhausted all other options, or you're already planning on trying out some new bars, perhaps bars with a milder sweep, as I suggested earlier, then you might as well try blasting two goats with one roost and get yourself some flex bars with a mild sweep. Other alterations that may help beyond handlebars are your levers. You want easy clutch and brake pull. If your clutch lever, for example, is akin to a forearm strengthener, then your arms are going to swell up like a fat guy at a donut convention. Hey, that's a low blow! Your options here may be to lube or replace your clutch cable, invest in an easy pull system like the one Moose sells, or a nice clutch lever and perch like the ones from Clake and ASV. I installed some steg pegs on blue steel. These simple little hockey pucks anchor my boots in at the calf, relieving pressure on my hands when riding uphill by leaning back into the pegs instead of having to hang on to the handlebars. But again, these sort of add-ons are expensive, so definitely exhaust all the other options on this list before investing in bars, pegs, and aftermarket clutches. The last add-on you may want to consider is a recluse clutch. Now I know recluses are polarizing, and I'll talk about the pros and cons of a recluse auto clutch in another video, but one of the big pros, and the only one I'm going to discuss today, most definitely is the relief your left hand will find when you no longer have to feather the clutch all day long. Of course, your clutch control will diminish in the process, so there's that to consider. Not to mention the fact a recluse is the most expensive alteration on this list, costing upwards of $900 US for a good one. One other thing worth mentioning, if you suffer from arthritis, like I did, vibrations are a big problem for you. Though the newer two-strokes have anti-vibration tech, my old two-stroke rattled like a damn paint can, which is one reason I switched to a four-stroke back in 2016. Four strokes are admittedly easier to ride and easier on the hand, so if nothing else works for you, dare I recommend maybe cutting a few strokes off your game and buying a thumper. Or at minimum, a newer KTM 2 smoker with their anti-vibration counterbalancer, which reportedly reduces vibration by 50%. Alright, that's it for me guys. Those are all of the things that I tried to make riding more comfortable for me. And I'm happy to say that now I am hand cramp and arm pump free. If you have any other tips and tricks that work for you, put them in the comments. Until next time, uh, stay dirty my friends.